Hey guys, that's Glue25. Turn out to 34. Episode 50 of Ranger Review 3, we have the Power Ranger Samurai, the Swordfish Sword, aka the Kajiki Oyagami from Samurai Sentai Shinkenja. So this is the new, the Swordfish Sword. It actually looks like a fish now. Now the gimmick on this one is when you roll the wheel, the fins actually move back and forth. Which is actually a cool addition compared to what Japan got. You know, it's... That's like one of the few um, positive swords, the Swordfish change. Yeah. Um, it has a mouth at least, so you know that's something nice also. And of course, just like the beetle origami, the beetle sword, we have the blue ranger now instead of the green ranger. Unfortunately, like the, the um, green ranger, he's stiff. He can't really do much. He spins the sword and he moves his head. That's it. And you just plug him in, like the like the other ones. Now this actually looks kind of cool. In my perspective, this actually looks kind of cool having something like this. It actually makes sense, you know. Yeah, it's all right. I mean, it's it's a good replacement for um, the hidden disc feature. Even though you actually see the disc right here, and they actually use it in the show, but you know, this is actually a really good, you know, nice little feature. Right? Um, if you guys remember in Dino Thunder, they, they did the same thing. The, um, but instead, the they had a little small little right little hook that actually attached to the auxiliary so was to make the Ranger sit on it. This time, we just peg it in. But instead. They can't move the figurine. Other than that, this is actually a really cool little feature. Now in Samurai, in episode 5, um, you see Kevin try looking for the swordfish sword and Jaden entrusted Kevin to go find it. Now in Shin Kenger, uh, they it was almost a similar, it was the exact, exact same thing, but instead, they actually realized that the Kajiki Oigami was already at the sea waiting to be caught. And just like in Samurai where we copied it, Kevin got someone's help, but instead it wasn't some it was just some random guy. Alright, so now we have the Samurai Megazo with the Swordfish armaments. As you guys know, this is a totally very different. Um, the sword now actually goes on the, on the hand instead of on the tip, where the Shinkinja would do it. Um, this mode is a bit strange, in my opinion, because... Yeah, why, why is it moved into an arm? That's pretty much a disadvantage. Fight. Yeah, and the fact that the arm sticks out like this, and the thing is, the sword just plugs in. It doesn't, you know, I can just randomly take it out like this. It's a, it's a little bit of an improvement over again being the backpack in Shinkenger because all they are is simply a backpack and a helmet. Yeah, but also... This is also another design that really doesn't work either. But the thing about the backpack it was when in Shinkenger, you have it like this, and you have a big white get, like, gap here. You're like... And the legs didn't get anything, the arms didn't get anything, just the back part, so you know. That, they actually kept the helmet in, in the Shinkenja, this is how the helmet would actually go on. Instead of the Kabuto Origami, which it was built in. But you know, the sole originally would be on the top here, and in the show, it's not like this. You can tell it's not like this. Alright, so now automation wise you guys can see it's bigger. The Kajiki Origami is bigger. Also, other things that have been changed are the removal of the torpedoes. These actually function. You can press these buttons on the side and they'll fire. Unfortunately, there's no torpedoes on the toy anymore. There's no torpedo. This was be a torpedo there, but there's nothing there now. Also, another change that was removed is the feature when you're moving when the disc is spinning. When you spin the disc, the beak goes up and down, up and down. That's the simple gimmick. And that's the lock for the nose. But since they removed the hidden disc, from the Kajiki Origami to the Swordfish, we lost that feature. The only good thing is that 
the Kajiki Origami's tail doesn't move while ours actually moves. Yeah, so tail. that's like the only plus between the US version and the Japanese version is the extra detail to the tail. In Japanese though, um, the, back, the fish would be on the back and the sword actually will go in between his the beak. Face. And then when it when they did the finisher, it would come down and slash them. Yeah. Um, pros and cons are it actually is something beside a backpack. The con is it's smaller. The sword is the arm. Cheaper plastic, unfortunately, too. Although they kept this color scheme correct. The color is exactly the same as the Kajiki Origami. Yes, they perfectly matched the color. Other, a few other things that have been changed though too. When they form into the Battle Wing Megazord, the tail does remove from the Ameri Japanese version and American version, but the Japanese version does this extra step where it opens up. An American, it just, just pops off. Open it up, and so this would just be like this. You, yeah. You, now you got any? You can still do it, yeah. But the point is that the, the fin portion of it doesn't open up. So obviously the Battle yeah. Wing Megazord formation has changed. The only bad part. I have about this toy line right now is I would not pay twenty dollars for a little feature like this. Yeah, because even though you do get the nice, the decent looking figure and the swordfish sword, it's really not worth twenty bucks. And the funny thing is, the swordfish sword wasn't really released with the Kabuto and the Taiga Origami. Um, they, yeah, for some reason they released the Beetle Zord and the Tiger, Tiger Zord, Zord first. But they skipped on the swordfish, it should have been the other way around. It's supposed to be Beetle, Swordfish, and then Tiger. Um, the packaging is the same as all as the as the others. The only difference is that now we replace the, the paper and the sticker here. But everything else is still in intact. Even the back is the same as the others. All it is is you can see the battle ring makers over here, and you can see it is changed differently. But you know, other than that, it's an okay toy, but not worth the $20 really much. In my So uh, you know, it's uh, I mean, it's worth it if you're gonna collect. Again, yeah, if you it. if you can't afford Shinkano and all the other origamis, for this whatever is a reason, nice little stopgap. Yeah, um, join us next week for the Power Rangers Jungle Fury, the Battle Claws, aka the Geki Changers from Geki Ranger. Great, come subscribe. See you next week. And also, the the cool thing was that the actor who was playing the fisherman was. Um, the uh, Blue Ranger from Die Ranger. So in Sentai, we actually get some, you know, cool people coming back. Just like in Shin in uh, Hurricane Ranger, Mega Blue came back. Yeah, every now and then Japan likes to bring back cast members, usually playing someone else, usually never playing themselves. And if you guys remember in Ghost Ranger, we had Senchan from Deku Ranger. He played uh, Ghost Green. Thanks again for watching our 50th episode celebrating our first anniversary for our series. As a special extra bonus, I actually recorded a live broadcast of me actually editing episode 50. So if you're curious of how I actually edit the series, go check the link below and you'll actually see the process between beginning and middle of editing episode 50.